Um, these animations can all freely be found on, on YouTube, so I kind of just pulled them here together for uh, something quick for you to see. I'm not going to play the whole audio, but this is just the animation showing that red band moving across. That's the direction that the action potential is actually moving. And if you zoom in, you can see this wave of propagation. So it's basically, this is oversimplification, but it's just showing you how uh, the ions are moving in. Sodium is going to move in. And as a result of sodium ions moving in and potassium ions rushing out, it causes the, an, the adjacent area next to it to actually become depolarized as well too. And so it starts to move down this way. Now here's a question. Based on this, once you have a change happening in a certain area, well, shouldn't both sides be affected? Then wouldn't that cause, you know, a domino effect this way and this way? Well, the reason why the action potential only goes one direction, it's very clever, it's because the part that just got depolarized and repolarized is in a refractory period, R-E-F-R-A-C-T-O-R-Y, refractory period, which prevents it from being allowed to have another action potential happen in a given amount of time. And because this all happens really fast, uh, this ensures while during the refractory period, that's when sodium ions and potassium ions are being reset, uh, are being reset, pumped across the membrane back to their original uh, concentration gradients. And so that's a refractory period and another action potential it cannot be stimulated again. Um, so it won't respond. And so that will keep the message only going in one direction. Uh, really quickly, here's an animation showing um, some of the ions that are involved here. So you can see which ones are the sodium ions. These are the, 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 the they're both purple, how annoying. The lighter purple are sodium ions and the darker purple are potassium ions, unless I'm colorblind, I apologize. So you can see here, Sodium ions are rushing in, they're rushing in, and then potassium ions are rushing out. And this is diffusion moving down a concentration gradient, and these channels can open and close. And finally, the sodium-potassium pump in the end, which requires ATP, is an example of active transport. And here you can see when things need to get reset, here's an ATP molecule, adenosine triphosphate. That's three little phosphate uh, molecules attached here and when ATP gets used it should get broken down into ADP and 1P and so you can see that one of these phosphates should actually drop off and you can see here we have three spots that should be three sodium ions getting exchanged for two potassium ions so let's see here da, da, da. there we go All right there we go they just get moved from one side to the other so let's just concentrate on ATP for now boom Look at that, okay, phosphate ADP. And then now let's look at the movement of sodium ions. There are three sodium ions that used to be on the outside, but they got they diffused to the inside of the axon and they're getting returned out. And this process, three sodium ions going out, exchanges for two potassium ions that will come in. Really clever that we figured all this out. Okay, if you have any other questions, please post them, thanks.